That admiral was quite a bird. He faced the ice and snow just to tell the Eskimos what everyone should know. You won't know what you're missing if you don't see Nord. <laughs> Transcribed from Hollywood, Norge, a division of Borg Warner, manufacturers of America's most modern automatic and ringer washers, gas and electric ranges, water heaters, and home freezers. Originators and world's largest manufacturers of self defrosting refrigerators, Norge presents the Red Skelton Radio Show. With Red Skelton, David Rose, and his orchestra, Lorene Tuttle, Pat McGeehan, and the Smith Twins will be me, Rod O'Connor. Now the star of our program, the man with the station wagon physique and the convertible face... <laughs> MGM's clown, Red Skelton. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Hiya, Rod. Hiya, Red. Say, boy, what happened to your car? It really looks beat up. Yeah, I was going to have it uh, repainted <laughs> and get a new top, but then I ran into some material shortages. <laughs> what material? Money. <laughs> Money? Yeah, money. Oh, yes. I've been working for you so long, I almost forgot what that was. That wasn't anything. <laughs> but, uh, about your car, uh, how'd you get it banged up so much in the first place? Well, I took it to one of those downtown parking lots. You know those places where they take your car for a down payment as a parking fee? Oh, yes. <laughs> Well, I drove onto the lot, and I asked the guy to be careful about denting my car. Mm -hmm. And he really was. They're the nicest dents you've ever seen. <laughs> Lucky he didn't damage the, Emmy, uh, the engine. What? <laughs> Lucky what? Yeah, well, my, I've got a hangnail, and it covers the words here. <laughs> I says, I, I'm uh, lucky he didn't damage the engine. <laughs> oh. It was okay when I took it out of the trunk. <laughs> well, in a case like that, aren't they liable? I... <laughs> I said, in a case like that, aren't they liable? Yeah, if you say anything about it, they're liable to do it again. <laughs> yeah. Well, the way I heard it, you pulled in, parked in the center of the lot, and walked away with the keys. Now, don't you think a thing like that irritates the parking lot attendants? It helps. <laughs> When I got back into the car, I found it was I was parked in the last row. Uh -huh. yeah, well, I missed something here. Wait a minute. Now. <laughs> I messed up this one. Yes, you did. I forgot to say that it was five feet across and it was three feet deep. Three hundred feet oh. deep. <laughs> this writing's so close to the paper. It's so. <laughs> Say it was five feet across and three hundred feet deep. Five hundred, uh, five feet across <laughs> yeah. and three hundred feet deep. Uh, yes. Well, that sounds like an alley. Maybe that's why that truck kept going through unscrambling cars. <laughs> <laughs> Say, how'd you ever get your car out from behind all those others? Oh, it was easy. I shifted into the reverse and I give her the gun and I backed out about sixty miles an hour and I maneuvered it all around, see, all around the other cars, yeah. and finally got out without a scratch. Did all this actually happen, Red? Yeah. It was the dream I had while I was being pulled out of the wreck. <laughs> I kind of feel bad about it because I'd planned to drive the car to Washington, D.C. the next vacation. Well, why Washington? Well, my mother brought me up never to squander money, so I, where else could I learn how not to do it? <laughs> that ain't what it says, but it will have to do. <laughs> well, you liked Washington, though, didn't you? Right? Oh, yeah. It's really a wonderful city. Gleaming white buildings in the Treasury Department, broad avenues in the Treasury Department, beautiful memorials in the Treasury Department, huge new... No, 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 just a minute. The Treasury Department... Let me seems... mention the Pentagon, will oh. you? <laughs> and the Treasury Department. Yes. The Treasury Department seems to have made quite an impression on you. Annually. <laughs> 
Hey, you know, I took my uncle in where they where they're making money. Yeah. And when he saw the um, print and the uh, the money on that press, he says, "How do you like the dirty crooks? They're stealing my idea." <laughs> They let me hold a $10,000 bill in my hand. Really? Yeah, of course, my feet was nailed to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, shall we tell some jokes? <laughs> hey, where'd you stay the last time you were there, Ed? Uh, I stayed at the Statler Hotel. That's a pretty classy place. Oh, uh, yeah. Did you have a suite? Mm-hmm. I say it was a pretty classy place. Did you have a suite? No, I took my wife with me. Oh. <laughs> Boy, I never saw a place so worried about politics. Everyone's trying to predict the next election. Well, that isn't so hard. Yeah. Hey, who do you think will win the election? The Democrats or Republicans? Eisenhower. I still... <laughs> <laughs> well, my question hasn't been answered yet. <laughs> hey, I think we'd better let David Rose and his orchestra play, huh? If you thought buying a washing machine was just a necessary evil, you're in for a pleasant surprise when you see the Nord triple action washer in the new Pyramid model. It's not only streamlined in looks, it's streamlined in action. If you've been shopping around, you've probably noticed that these new full skirt washers have a tendency to tip over. But not this new Nord. For the Nord Pyramid model is the only full skirt washer with a wider base and five instead of the usual four casters to prevent tipping. It rolls as lightly as a kiddie car, but you can anchor it from either side with the tip of your toe because two of the casters are self-locking. Of course, the most important thing about this new Norge is that it gets your clothes cleaner in less time. Norge triple action really gets the deep down dirt, yet the average load takes only seven minutes. And folks, when you buy a new Norge ringer washer, you can count on quality, even in the parts you can't see. Ask your Norge dealer to show you the new Pyramid model washers. For you won't know what you're missing if you don't see Nord. (laughs) 
From the Skelton Scrapbook of Satire, we present a chapter about Sunday dinners. It's a story about Clem Kadiddlehopper, a moocher. Well, here I am. I sound like Margaret being dragged through a knot hole. Don't I? <laughs> oh, sure, well, anyhow, that's the words to the song, anyhow. Words? <laughs> yeah, if I could just remember the tune. <laughs> Boy, here it is Sunday. Seems like only yesterday it was Saturday. <laughs> but I love Sunday, though, you know. Nobody works, and then I don't look so conspicuous. <laughs> Boy, am I hungry. I'm so hungry I could eat a horse. And if that butcher keeps raising prizes, I probably have to. <laughs> Gets them later, enjoys them long. I don't know. <laughs> oh, well, I wish I had time to sit down and read Gene Fowler's new book, Snazola. It's all about Jimmy Durante. <laughs> uh, well, look who's coming down the street, old Mac Davis. Maybe he'd read the Fowler book to me. Howdy, Clem. Howdy, Mac. Uh, what's that in your hand, Clem? Well, I ain't sure. Either I found a rope or I've lost a cow. <laughs> now that's one, from one of them Gene Fowler books. Yes, it is. That's from Snozzola. Tell me, uh, what are you going to do for a living now? Well, I got a job delivering newspapers, you see. Mm -hmm. Extra, extra, read all about it. I wish I could. <laughs> Well, uh, maybe if you earn some money, you can persuade Daisy June to be serious about you. You know, she's been seeing other men. Yeah, and the moment they start seeing her, that'll be the end of that. <laughs> of course, you that can't That girl's exact... got a head that wore out four bodies. Really? <laughs> of course, you can't exactly blame her for playing around, you know. When you went on your trip, she was sort of at loose ends. As I recollect, she was kind of saggy in the middle, too. <laughs> Well, here's where she lives. I think I'll mosey in and see what they're having for Sunday dinner. See you later, Mac. Okay. Would you read the Durante book to me someday? Oh, hello, Clem. Well, Daisy June. <laughs> that was a brothy hello. <laughs> well, it's the reason I talk like that. I'm a broth of a boy, they say. <laughs> Clam, so you can smell the new perfume I'm wearing. I, I smell it. I can't get any closer. Don't you like it? What is it? Rabbit hutch number three? <laughs> <laughs> it's really fine. It's really fine. But uh, don't you think the glue factory down the road may complain? Now, don't be funny, Clam. Are you on your way home? Yep. Uh, I'm due there for supper. We're having, uh, blackstrap molasses. Well, I have to go in and prepare a chicken dinner. I said I have to go in and prepare a chicken dinner. Well, why don't you say something, Clem? Well, I can't. My mouth is watering so fast. <laughs> uh, it, it, you don't have to have a blotter, do you? <laughs> Think of, no, right now I'm thinking about you and how lovely you are. Now, somehow I got the feeling, I got the feeling your mind is on something else. No, I am just thinking about you. Now, don't think this is just flattery to get something to eat because it ain't. You've got the most beautiful eyes I've ever seen. I love the, the that red one. <laughs> but one red one and one green one. <laughs> If your nose was only amber, we could make a stoplight out of it. 
<laughs> oh, you've really got pretty hands and pretty eyes and the most shapely drumsticks. I mean, uh... <laughs> Well, now, there I've let the cat out of the bag. I hear you got a new job since you came back from your trip, Clam. Yes. Delivering papers. Yeah, they wouldn't take me back on the hockey team. <laughs> Why not? They finally got a real puck. <laughs> I don't get half of this stuff myself till I hear it. I'm sure glad to see you working. Yep. I hope you're saving your money. That I am. I'm saving it up for a torso. Torso. A torso. Lamb. A trousseau is for a girl. Well, I'm thinking about getting one of them, too. <laughs> I thought I was your girl. Well, you're a wonderful cook, Daisy June. And you talk pretty good, too. Thank you, Clam. But sometimes a man likes to just to sit back and look. Clam. <laughs> yep. Are you still a seeing the widow? Sure, I see her. There's nothing wrong with my eyes. <laughs> <laughs> That's too fast. She didn't get that at all. <laughs> Yeah, I, I kind of like that widow, you know. Oh, Clam, she's two-faced. I know, that's what I like about her. <laughs> you can kiss her coming or going. You ought to have your eyes examined if you think she's attractive. Well, looks ain't everything, you know. Beauty's only skin deep. Of course, they ought to take her out and skin her. <laughs> Yes, they say beauty's only skin deep, but that's deep enough for me. I'm no cannibal, you know. <laughs> Looks ain't everything, you know. I kind of feel sorry for that window, that widow. <laughs> See, it's the same thing. Whenever you're around a window or a widow, look out. I kind of feel sorry for her. She's got all that money and no one to spend it on. Clam Cadiddle Hopper. Shame. You only want her because her husband left her all that money. Don't be silly. <laughs> I'd want her no matter who left it to her. <laughs> Clam, you're a moron. Well, you notice I ain't stuck up about it, don't you? <laughs> I'll give you some dinner. Yo. Maybe then you'll forget the Witter Brown. Well, I can't forget her completely. That's where I'm having breakfast, you see. Come in. Yeah. Look, I bought, I bought myself a new bowl to replace the one you broke the last time I was here. Gee, Clem, do you expect to eat out of this? It's a dog bowl. Well, I know it's a dog bowl. <laughs> but it's got high sides on it. It keeps my ears out of the food. <laughs> Besides, he only uses it in the morning. <laughs> oh, here comes Grandpa now. Yeah. He looks good today. Yes, he does. He's, he's got much... uh, color in his cheeks. Yes, he's a much lighter green. <laughs> Goes nice with his purple lips, don't you? Grandpa, Clem's been a hang around that widow again. Yeah. Clem, you ought to know better than to hang around that widow. Why? Uh, she might lead you astray. Oh, no, she won't. I know this country around here too well to get lost. <laughs> Forget the widow. Have you ever stopped to think what it would be like to be married to me? Yes, I've thought about it. So have I, Clam. Gruesome, ain't it? <laughs> but, Clam, you need me. I need you like I need another hole in my head. You'll be sorry when some other feller comes along and marries well, me. Well, I won't be as sorry as he'll be. <laughs> Before I leave, please pay me for the paper I delivered this morning. I've got to eat, too, you know. One of these days, I hope to find out why. Oh, you. Get out. Well, what a fine howdy do, slamming the door right in my face. Daisy June, open up. I refuse to leave unless you open that door. Clam, did it hurt you when I slammed the door in your face? Oh, no. My nose was always flat like this. <laughs> now I'll have to breathe through my ears. <laughs> Is that all you wanted? No, I want to know, uh, if I come back, will you take me in your arms and you, you, will you kiss me? Oh, yes, Clam. That settles it. Goodbye. Clam. Now, I'm all puckered up. You've got to kiss me. 
You're all puckered up? Yeah. It's what you get for eating them persimmons. <laughs> well, go put your lipstick on. You mean take it off? No, put it on. I gotta have a target, don't I? <laughs> It'll have to be just a friendly kiss. Oh? Because Grandpa's in the next room. Okay, I'll just give it one of those motherly kisses. <laughs> That's what you get for running around with those Air Corps boys. <laughs> Friendly little thing, ain't you? Was that motherly? Yeah. Now I know why Pop never left home. <laughs> and now the Smith Twins and Undecided. Wash day hint from Jesse Cartwright, co-director of the Norge Home Economics Department. Did you know you can wash frilly blouses or a fragile lace tablecloth right along with sheets and shirts in your Norge? Here's the trick. Just put the frilly things in a pillowcase and run a basting thread across the top. They'll be just as safe as if you'd wash them by hand. Uh, how do you put the frills through the wringer? You can leave them right in the pillow slip rod. Because with the new Norge Gentle Touch Wringer, the pressure instantly adjusts to any thickness from blankets to hankies. It's easier on fabrics, and clothes come out drier. Clothes come out cleaner, too, in less time, thanks to that gentle but penetrating Norge triple action. The average load takes just seven minutes. But Norge has an automatic timer for any of five different washing times, from lightly soiled on up to very, very soiled. You just set the timer, and Norge shuts itself off automatically. Why not see the Norge triple action washer in the new Pyramid model? You won't know what you're missing... If you don't see Nord. A page from the Mean Little Kid's Diary or Sunday morning at Junior's house. Have you ever noticed in the morning, the one morning that you can sleep late, the city decides to tear up the streets? <laughs> and Junior prowls around the house like he was on horseback? <laughs> well, let's listen in and see what happens. <laughs> He's getting bored just laying here like this. I wonder why I wakes up before the rest of them. Could it be that the Sandman's not giving me my quota? <laughs> well, I wish there was something for me to do. So I was killing a little time to lay the side to get up, boy. Let's see if there's anything under my pillow that I could play with. Let's see. Let's see. No. Let's see. Uh... What do 
I sleep in a lifeboat? <laughs> well, nothing interesting there. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a pillow fight. I'm going to beat myself to death with a pillow. <laughs> oh, look, it's snowing. <laughs> oh, boy. <clears throat> and now I know what I'm allergic to. <laughs> look at them feathers, boy. I better go out and get a chicken to take the blame for this, boy. <laughs> <laughs> On second thought, I'm going to get a broom and sweep it up. On third thought, why think about it at all? I'm going to get spanked for it. You might as well have a reason. <laughs> Go in your pops, you wait. If he ain't, I had the feeling that he is going to be. <laughs> I'm going to go see him, Father. Oh! I fell over a chair! <laughs> I don't know. It's too dark to tell. <laughs> Did you hurt yourself? Yes, I hurt myself. That's a good boy. Yeah. <laughs> well, they sure cherish me, don't they? Well, you wouldn't be so calm about it if you knew I broke a leg. Junior! Not my leg, the chair leg. <laughs> now he tells me. Yeah. Besides, I bruised me with a kneecap. My little kneecap. I can tell everybody, though, I got it in football. <laughs> I'll rub it with alcohol on it. Don't say that word. You'll waken your father. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's trying to get some sleep. He got in late last night. Yes, I know, I know. I heard the police siren. <laughs> hey, we better check on him and see if he's okay. It's locked. He knew I was coming. <laughs> Let me out! Let me out! Well, that's silly. Let me in! <laughs> that's a misprint if I ever saw one. Oh, Junior. Now stop that, will you? Don't look at me that sober way. <laughs> Do you want to wake up the whole house, young man? Yes. Can you give me some tips? Yes. I'll, I'll give you some tips. You get right back into your bed. But I ain't sleepy! Well, we are. Now go back to bed. I've been in bed so long that all my dreams are playing a return engagement. <laughs> well, oh, I'm getting some more shed eye. And don't he's disturb me. He's been at it again. <laughs> <laughs> well, I sure hope he sleeps it off so he can play with me today. For the last time, your father doesn't drink. Oh, he don't? No, he's very tired. Oh, yes, I know. Last night, he came home tired to the guild. <laughs> Now, then, look in there, Junior. Right. See how quietly your father's dropped off to sleep again? Yeah. Now, does he look like he's been drinking? I don't know. Could you take that lampshade off his head so we get a better look? <laughs> <laughs> you see them silly guys at parties that put on lampshades. <laughs> hey, that bum's talking in his sleep. <laughs> Hey, listen, 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 listen to him. Maybe I'll get some money out of him. I can't hear him. Wait, I'll fix it. You can't hear him. Junior, stop pinching his nose. I'm not pinching his nose. I'm trying to tune him in louder. <laughs> This is Rod O'Connor saying, remember in refrigerators, home freezers, gas, and electric ranges, washers and water heaters, everything Norge makes, Norge makes right. Make a point of visiting your Norge dealer this week to see the new Norge triple action washer with the exclusive non-tip pyramid design. It's the washer with the big porcelain lined tub that holds a larger load. The washer with the gentle touch wringer and the famous Norge triple action that actually gets clothes cleaner in less time. The washer that's built for years of easier wash days. Yes, see the new Norge Pyramid Model washer at your Norge dealer soon. And now until next week... This is Red Skelton saying thanks for listening and reminding you that you won't know what you're missing if you don't see Norge. Join us again next week for the Red Skelton Show. Red Skelton is heard in this program through the courtesy of Metro-Golden-Mayer Studios. 
This is a copyrighted feature transcribed from Hollywood. This is the CBS Radio Network.